Are we up? Um, it has been noted that it is at least 9 o'clock, and we do have a quorum. Um, we're hoping Kellen will, will show up. Um, Chuck, are you going to tell us you have to leave by 10.30? No, probably about 10.00. Okay, okay. We will... I'm hoping we had a few things added to the well, one thing added to the agenda. So I'll call the meeting to order. It is uh, nine o'clock by the, the the big clock in the room, and roll call of committee members. Uh, everybody in the room gets to say who they are. I'm George Brandt, County Board Supervisor, District Six, and Chairman of the committee. Beth Killian, Supervisor Number Seven, and the Secretary <coughs> for the committee. Tony Munson, representing Towns Association. Bert Goyan, representing Town Supervisor. Tommy Ford, Supervisor District 16. Do you guys want to switch nameplates? <laughs> Chuck Wallach, uh, County Board Member from District 11. Randy Severson, Livestock Producer Member of the Committee. Chuck? Chuck Zoner, County Conservationist. Burge Gamreth, Department of Land Management. I record the meeting minutes. Becky Arneson, Department of Land Management, Fiscal Coordinator. Mike Kornman, uh, Director of Land Management. Well, leave that on because that's our very next, oh no, I guess I need to certify open meeting law requirements have been, no, new employee introductions, stay there, turn that on. Um, Mike is our new uh, department head for the Department of Land Management. Uh, he was interviewed, we were just um, trying to remember Ju July 26th I think I and, think it was. and started uh, two weeks ago today and um, like I said he has um, in that amount of time he's balanced the federal budget and cured cancer <laughs> and um, you know resolved all the issues of the world so uh, tell us about yourself Mike and, and what your uh, experience has been so far well it's great to be here um, I have to say um, Everyone in the building, and especially the Department of Land Management, has been very welcoming, and they've really made the transition um, uh, as easy as a transition can be. And uh, we have a really good group of dedicated um, employees that love their job, and it's it's just really great to be here and be part of Trempolo County. Anything else? A little bit more about my background just a little bit. a little bit more okay. um, I've really been bulk of my career I've uh, <coughs> spent uh, up in Burnett County in a couple of different roles mostly with uh, the University of Wisconsin Extension as the community development uh, educator up there I wore uh, many hats uh, long-range planner strategic planner tourism director economic development director did a lot of work with uh, uh, doing education on restoring and preserving natural shorelines for uh, water quality up in, in the 500 lakes in Burnett County. So I've wore a lot of different hats. Um, I'm an avid or outdoorsman, hunt, hunter, fisherman. Um, so I just uh, I just really like wor working with rural communities. And Trimple County is amazingly beautiful. And I'm um, just starting to get out there to really know it and um, enjoying my time here so far. Okay, thank you. Um, what, yes? 500 lakes up there in what county? Burnett? Burnett, yes. You have a good lake up there that we can go to? Well, whenever I catch fish, um, you will see me reference Warner Lake. Is that for back or? Nope. <laughs> but that's what I tell people. <laughs> So you're living in Independence? Yeah, I'm living, yeah, yeah. On county, off of County Q? Yeah, somewhere up in there. Oh, I yeah. own land about a mile up the road. Great. <laughs> yes, you can't hide. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, we know where you live. That's, that's kind of how things work in yes. rural counties, isn't it? Can I say that that's anybody who wants to stop in and visit with you can is free to do that? Yeah, I have uh, cold beer in the fridge all no, the time. No, you don't. No, <laughs> no, no, he does. No, he doesn't. Not in his office. No, yeah. I meant in your office. I'm, oh, okay. Uh, At my home. Yeah, my okay. home fridge. I have cold beer there all the time. Okay. His no fridge in my office. office. <laughs> and his driveway is very long. Yes. 
Okay, well, moving on. Thank you. Get to know him. Uh, we're hoping Mike will be with us for a long time. Um, George, yes. I, it was brought to my attention uh, when we hired Mr. Newberry in the Department of Health uh -huh. uh, that he had to be uh, officially approved as the department head mm. person director by the full county board. Ah. So that might be the same case with Mike. Um, we would check into that. I don't think it is the Board of Health uh, uh, and other offices within the county have certain statutory requirements. I'm not sure that, that the department had, uh, here does. Well, check with Mr. Niemeyer because the Board of Health statutes did not have to have him, but Mr. Niemeyer said okay. the county did. So check on that just Well, I don't think we could do it today anyway because it's no. not on the agenda. Yeah. Yes. We'll no, check. but for full county board. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, well, um, just when you thought you were safe. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll certify the open meeting law requirements have been met by proper posting. We have an amended agenda, 14 items. Is uh, What's the will of the committee? Moved, mo motion to approve the okay. agenda. Motion okay. by Wallach to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Skoyan. Um, anything we need to draw attention to? Seemingly not. All in favor of approving the amended agenda as printed, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. It is approved. We have two sets of minutes, uh, one from the, the, our regular meeting on August 4th, but also minutes uh, related to the, the time we got together to interview candidates for the director position. I'd entertain a motion to... Motion to approve the July 26th. And August okay, motion to approve both uh, by Scoyan, second by Nelson. Any other corrections, additions? Hearing none, all in favor of approving both sets of minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? The both sets are approved. We're going to move to item number seven, the presentation of Land and Water Resource Management Plan, the five-year update. Our county conservationist, uh, Chuck Zauner is here, um, and this is a first experience <laughs> for me. We have two screens on which to see it. Um, this is the much promised, better quality screen over there. So, uh, have you got the clicker and everything? I here have the clicker. <laughs> that one's better for me. Yeah. Or even that, little one, even that little one is pretty clear. Yeah, th get the lights first, thank you. Um, Chuck, do you, why don't you take the whole thing, tell us what this is about and the meeting and Land and Water Resource Management Board and all of that. Okay. This is a five-year review of the Land and Water Management Resource Plan for Trempolo County. <coughs> this plan is written every 10 years. This is the five-year update. We need to um, present this to the Land and Water Management Board October 5th. That uh, got a little bit delayed because of the, my late hiring. What I'm going to be presenting to you is a follow-up to the, um, the four questions that I presented you last month. And Supervisor Killian did find some mistakes, and I thank you for that. A, a good fifth grade teacher will find every mistake you ever make. So, so thank you on that. And so I'll proceed with the um, presentation. So, uh, Trempolo County has a rich tradition in protecting the natural resources. I think some of you are aware that in Trempolo County there was four watersheds going on at the same time. That is an item that we should be proud of. This plan is an update of the original plan that was created in 1999. It was later updated in 2006 and 2011 and 2016. What we're reviewing again today is a five-year review of the 2016 plan. Public participation was a key in developing these plans, but this is the five-year review. In a 10-year review, we would have public hearings. I think we all know where Trempolo County is. I hope we do. Um, but it is approximately 477,000 acres. It is surrounded by the Mississippi, Trempolo, Buffalo, and Black Rivers. There are 25 streams totaling 20, 59 miles with exceptional 
resource water resource waters and that's something we should be proud of the end of that slide is there's 14 streams totaling 134 miles that are on the 303 D list and that's some of the things that we're trying to correct with this plan and I'll proceed with that a little bit more by the way if there's any questions or anything feel free to um, interrupt or ask while we go along so what I did here is basically there are four main goals and in the plan there's multiple objections or how to obtain the goal in the red is what the goal is so it's to protect and enhance the water resources of Trempeleau County the goal or objective is to protect those surface water resources the number two goal is to protect and enhance the soil resources of the county the objective of how to do that is to crop all croplands to a tolerable soil erosion loss tolerance and to have the phosphorus index six or less and that is a state standard for phosphorus the third goal is to manage land use and preserve land and water resources in Trempeleau County the objective of how to do that is utilize the town land use plans to separate conflicting land use and reverse trends to towards fragmentation of county woodlands and farmlands this could be done with the comprehensive plan and this plan and the um, farmland preservation number four goal is to encourage sustainable forest practices that protect the groundwater and surface waters and the way we do that is inform residents and loggers about the um, sustainable forest practices in 1920 we've um, set some side some money aside from the county funds to improve timberland practices some of the ways that we are doing that and one of our main ones is the stream bank protection and basically that is to lessen the slope of the the bank and then putting rock riprap towards the bottom where the velocities are higher this is the most common practices that we are using today another way another practice that we're doing is gully prevention or healing of the gully as you can see in this one there is quite a bit of velocity that's why that um, erosion control mat is down the middle so that it can handle the higher velocities if the velocities get too high there's rock put there I put this one also in here again because we're doing quite a bit of stream bank work but I want to point out how close the crops are to the top of the bank and how that is causing some of the problems with the stream banks from eroding something that you should just keep in mind we are trying to do nutrient management this is a picture of a manure storage it's one of the tools that we can use in nutrient management our goal in nutrient management and waste and manure storage is to utilize the manure so that it's being placed when the plants need it the most and the pollution would be the least this is a practice that is not used very often in Trempeleau County and that's the small earthen dams in our surrounding counties they're used quite often and this will do two things it will control sediment from delivering into the streams and um, rivers and also it will be to reduce the stormwater effects of some of these larger storms I, I I was hoping that yeah, okay yes. Yeah, so the, this committee has over the years not not supported the dams based mostly on the um, uh, the need for maintenance, almost constant maintenance and inspections and so forth. It's just lack of staff, lack of, lack of resources. Um, are you wanting to turn the page on that and 
start a new era in terms of county? Yes, I do. Um, and, you know, when they're filling up so quickly, that's kind of almost a result of poor practices above. Uh -huh. So, and if we didn't collect the sediment there, where is it going? It's going downstream, and that's not what we want. Um, the other county that does quite a bit of this is Buffalo County, and we did have a tour, and they're, they have had as much as 70 small dams put in in one year. I know their territory is a little bit different, but you know we also have to think about not only sediment control, but yeah, I think we're being more and more aware of the um, stormwater control. Yes. What are they doing about funding these dams now? We can fund them through our cost sharing. And we just, we've talked about this a little bit in our staff. And I think in Trempolo County, we're just not, they're not aware of it because they have not been put in very often. And I know Verge is working on a newsletter and we will probably try to approach this. We have in our, I think we have about 15 people signed up for next year. And looking at their applications, it looks like two would be likely for a small dam. Yes, uh, you know, these galvanized culvert and that are rusted out and there hasn't been any funding, you know, for repairing. And that's, you know, in Trempo County. So I'm just wondering. Yeah, I, that's a good point. But I think those are the larger ones. And, you know, some of these smaller dams have a PVC pipe that wouldn't rust out. That's, and that's why can't they be replaced with that? Um, pretty well, much. They aren't that big a dam, probably three acres, four acres. Oh, I would think they could be replaced with no, a. But it didn't seem to be any movement at all. It's just one special dam that I had in mind here. Yeah, I would think and, that. Uh, this didn't seem to be any, yeah. So I, I would think that's, when you get the corrugated metal, they're usually larger drain areas. So this was back in the 70s. Yeah, and probably PVC wasn't really prevalent at no. that time. No, no. So. Well, this uh, appears to be a conversation we're gonna have for a while, so you yeah. bring us information on that. The, um, reclamation <laughs> um, there are 25 large mines in Trumplow County which are there as I say large they're greater than one acre when I heard that first number I was pretty astounded there are 23 mines that are under an acre and reclamation is trying to get the land back to use after the mine has gone away. And I'll, um, I'll approach that subject a little bit later about how, what we're gonna be doing in the next five years that's been different from the other five years. Grass filter strips. This is a practice that's used in our surrounding or neighboring state of Minnesota. And I, I did work in Minnesota and it's a requirement of all um, streams that they have a 33 foot setback from streams to collect phosphorus and reduce the sediment load into the streams. Um, I would like to explore this as a practice. I think we would get more bang for our buck than just riprap or stream bank. It's relatively economical but it's something that I think we should look into a little bit more. I have a, a question about like, tell us a little bit about how Minnesota handles their you know, mandatory filter strips. Are they allowed to, I don't know, maybe that's new growth, but I could see that it would be a, a more amenable if like it could be harvested. It's a great point and I would, you know, I would want the phosphorus reduction. So some of the complaints with the filter strips in Minnesota is that they said that the sediment and phosphorus runs out and, and then it collects into those um, plants and 
there's not that much phosphorus reduction. I think there is because the sediment is reduced. But I think it would be beneficial for the phosphorus reduction to have that ability to remove the plants which the phosphorus are within. I think that it would also make it a much more sellable practice that they could get some hay or some grass hay off the practice. And it also help with maintenance. Absolutely. We wouldn't get the box elders and things like that yeah. through there. Okay, so what are we going to be doing different the next five years? I'm a boring guy. We're just going to be doing the boring items. So that's increasing the inspection of ag practices, conservation practices, and mines. So um, farmland preservation, which is FLP stands for, my goal would be to inspect those, and that's the state standard of inspecting those plans 25% every year. So every plan, every per participant would be reviewed once every four years. Um, our, our, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that in the past we've been doing 10% per year or attempting to do 10% per year, and this is quite an increase. But on the other hand, in terms of farmland preservation contracts, we're down to almost I mean, we probably have at least 100, if not a little more. Yes, there's. We, we had a high of 800 at one point, mm -hmm. but the farmland preservation plan, my or farmland preservation, my understanding is it's being phased out in favor of um, ag enterprise areas, yep. AEAs, and we have at least one in the county. So, um, do we? Are we continuing to focus on a? A sunsetting program instead of focusing on a on a on a new program. I mean, how how are we making the decision um, that way? The AEA is farmland preservation. Okay, so, so they, they are interchangeable in terms of de correct describing them. Okay, and there's approximately thirty that are in our system of the old system of where it was based on income and how much tax credits you would get. Right. So we would be looking at all those. To expand the farmland preservation plan, we would have to rezone, which is a much bigger deal than we would be dealing with today. But it's something that the committee, if they want to think about it, should think about it. But what I'm saying is the plans that we have in place now, I would try to inspect 25% of them. Okay. There's also the um, mines, and I think they've been in being inspected, but the mines would be inspected annually, and that's the ones over an acre and under an acre. And there's also the conservation practices that in my past jobs, we did um, inspect the conservation practices. I did not come up with the criteria of that yet. You know, which ones do we look at? One's over a certain amount or one's under a certain amount, but I think looking at conservation practices in the past has two benefits. One is that we're going to see if it's being operation, operated and maintained as it should. And number two, when I've done this in the past, it's a learning experience for the conservation staff, such as you're <coughs> pointing out the corrugated metal pipe, that we learn what we could correct or make better in conservation practices in the future. The other thing is the um, nutrient management plans. In 2019, we had 26% of the crop lands in nutrient management plans. 2020, it dropped a little bit because of COVID and everything, and I'm trying to get it up to 28%. There's other counties surrounding us you know, we always like to compare ourselves to other um, counties or states. There's um, ones that are lower than us, and but La Crosse County has, I believe, at a they're at a 41 percent. That's the first step in the nutrient management plan. That I hope you all be aware of. First is getting their plan. 
Second is understanding it, and third is really using it. So, you know, this is a relatively simple goal of trying to get it up 2% from what we were at 2019. The other way that we would be doing things, and I've kind of alluded to this in other slides, is that we'd be trying to add two or three new conservation practices to put in our repertoire, and that would be the small dams and the filter strips. And I still wouldn't, you know, just limit it to that point, but I'm, you know, we would, it seems like right now we're doing mainly um, stream bank protection, which is great, but I think we can get some other practices in here to reduce the phosphorus load and the sediment loads to our streams and creeks. Any questions? I have a question about the ag enterprise area, you know, because besides, you know, the current contracts that you know, are going to retire, um, doesn't sound like there's really any push to get more ag enterprise areas. Because I know our contract, I was surprised when I, you know, was going to renew it. I was like, well, you can't renew it. And that's how I learned that, um, you know, about the ag enterprise areas. And I don't know if other people, other, you know, farmers with contracts would, you know, found out the same way. And, uh, you know, I hate to see that it's just sitting in one township and, you know, not going to go any further. You know, another great point, um, and I've been contacted by the DADCAP, and I have not seen the interest yet, but they have also mentioned what you just said. And I guess that would be my job to recruit other townships and things to see how much interest it is. Those people are getting $5 an acre to be in that system. And there's other ways to bump up more money per acre by zoning and things like that. But I think we're getting into more um, controversial subjects of rezoning and things like that. But that's the simplest way to get into farmland preservation at this point. And it, I guess I'll do more to um, research that in other townships. Thanks. But thanks for the point. I am finished. Well, I love these questions. <laughs> I really do because. Very yes, I, I really do because. We are right now, as a staff, looking at how to evaluate practices. And what we're talking about is evaluating practices on practice basis, and then looking at what watershed they were in. So, you know, if you want to see what we're trying to work up right now, but that is a great question, and I can tell you we're working on it right now. Um, Basically, what we've had done in the past is we get this amount of money, and we go through it and see how much is um, gone and then move on to the next. But I would think that it would be relevant to see which practice would be more relevant over the other practice. I think um, we'll be looking forward to uh, monthly reports related to uh, this plan and uh, we'll also get an update of probably in a couple months on how things went in with the Land and Water Resource Management Board. And uh, October 5th, we're going to do this presentation virtual, George and I. So. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. it's Tuesday, Tuesday before our October meeting, so we'll be able to, to talk about it then. Thank you. And if anybody wants to, you know, to add or subtract from the presentation, please tell me beforehand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, conservation, if well, here we go. Um, discussion of possible action on conservation aids grant project. Um, Becky, I assume this is mm -hmm. your bailiwick. <laughs> so in your packets, you guys will see that you have, uh, this is an old version of a conservation aids form. Um, I prefer 
the clubs to fill this out so we have a good understanding of what the project is that they want to do. Um, this will also give a good cost breakdown for that's, you. That's this guy here, right? Yep. Okay. The new forms are two boxes pretty much that check the category and you won't get an understanding of what the project actually is. So I take the information off of here and put it into the new form for the club. Um, this year we have just the one application, so there's not much to approve, but I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of what is going on. Um, so a little, bit, a little bit of background about conservation aids. Um, it is a grant that we get through the state. Um, it's based off of the acreage in the county. So we are guaranteed $1,971, but it's a 50-50 match grant. So you have times that by two, so $3,942. I, I it's on. It is. Okay. It, this red light doesn't working. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's 50-50 match. So the club has to provide the 1,971, and so does the grant. But we can get more funding. A lot of the counties, I can't say a lot, a few of the counties in the state don't participate. So there's usually extra funding. So I always ask for extra funding. Um, the last couple years, we have gotten what we have requested. So it's been great that way. Um, Two years ago was Petrick Park. We did $8,000 for um, Boardwalk. Uh, last year was the maintenance project for Elk Creek, and that was about 6300 This year, Elk Creek has another project that they put forward. Um, so what they want to do, and this is located, if you look at that second page, just north of Elk Creek, um, it's on that uh, Chimney Rock Creek. The best part about this project is it could be ongoing. So as funds become available, they can keep going down the stream and keep adding fish structures. So they want to propose a project that will create three 16-foot jetted trout structures. These structures will be placed on the outside corners of Chimney Rock Creek and will make a stable habitat that provides overhead cover for trout and other fish. And it'll be covered with rock and soil. The structure will also reduce or eliminate current erosion that is now taking place. They're talking about three cross logs that will be placed to direct stream flow into the structures. And like I said before, it's an ongoing project. They started it last year and they're hoping to continue into 2024. What I like a lot about Elk Rod and Gun is they try to pull in other entities to work with them. So you'll see at the bottom that they're also going to be working with the independent schools, um, Trout Unlimited, and then of course land management and quality habitat. So um, that is the current project up for grabs for the cost share funds. And I have given the resolution to Beth. Would you want me to read it this time? I think so. Whereas the legislature of the state of Wisconsin enacted legislation providing for allocation to respective counties on an acreage basis for the county fish and game projects on the condition that there is a local match for the state allocation. And whereas Tremplow County desires to participate in county fish and game projects pursuant to provisions of section 23.09 parentheses 12 of the Wisconsin statutes, and whereas the funds to be made available by the state for this project year are not likely to exceed $7,000, and a local private source has made the commitment to provide the required local match for the state funds. Now be it resolved that the Trumpler County Board of Supervisors does hereby accept the local matching funds and state funding for the project and work on the project shall proceed based on the availability of such funds. Now be it resolved that the Environment and Land Use Committee is authorized to expend the funds hereby accepted for creating three 16-foot jetted trout structures to be placed on the outside corners of Chimney Rock Creek. For this project year, the location is north of Elk Creek on the stream section located in Section 30, Town 23 North, Range 8 West, and introduced by the Environment and Land Use Committee. Heard the descriptions. Is there a motion to, motion approve, to approve by Wallach? Is there Sex Severson got it first? Um, do we? Uh, there were no specific numbers. Um, you you spoke in the resolution spoke generally of uh, as funds become available, so that that would cover any kind of um, money that would come in afterwards above the um, the the minimum. 
So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for their total, which is $6,005, okay. um, which is well over what we normally would be offered. Um, so I'm going to ask for that in hopes that we can get all of it. If we can get all of it, great. We'll fund what they're requesting this year. If we can't, we'll fund whatever we can of what they're requesting. Um, and that's very, they understand that and they know because no matter what they're going to do this project, it's just nice to offset the cost. Randy, you had some. Yeah, I always forget all these, but, but conservation clubs apply for the money and then volunteer labor on private land? Right. Well, it can be private or public, depending private on public. where the project is, like Petrick Park, of course, mm -hmm. public area. We allow it um, to happen there. Um, it just has to have public access. Public access. So like when we did three years ago, we did a project where we created 600 feet of um, fishing area that had to have public access allowed to it in order for it to be allowed on this program. But it can be on private land. Can I interrupt you for just yeah. a second here? Yeah. This is one place you can see. If you drive up Highway 93, Jim Helgeson, who was big in the Elk Rod and Gun Club, donated quite a few dollars. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's part along the creek. It's been rip-wrapped and all of that. There's grass there. There are benches where you can go and sit mm -hmm. on the Chimney yeah. Rock Creek. And you can see it right from Highway 93 as you're going north of Elk Creek. Well, and what the clubs need to t remember, too, is this doesn't have to be just stream maintenance. Um, I think it was four years ago we did um, archery targets for Ettrick Rod and Gun. Well, one of the Rod and Guns. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but we purchased targets for them for their archery. They want to get people involved in hunting and fishing, and they want to get um, – youth involved I mean anything like that would be really beneficial you can do habitat you can do stocking you can do um, just I mean it's pretty much endless as long as it's a conservation project so the rod and guns um, I'm working on trying to get more awareness um, there's been a lot of changes with uh, who's in charge of rod and guns and I'm trying to get the correct contact information Facebook has been wonderful because I do see a lot of that now where I can get updated on the rod and guns and I've reached out directly to Whitehall they were thinking about getting something done but it must have fell through last minute but I know that I'm gonna reach out with them again and see for next year what I would like to do is get a folder going of pending projects so we can always have something there in case um, and if something falls through we can just grab one of those What's the actual title of the funding or the program? County Conservation Aids. Okay, is it limited to one project annually or? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, it's just the one project annually we, and we have to set it, um, we deliver it to the DNR October 1st is when it's due. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for so the following year. In the years where we have competing programs, it's the committee's decision as to which one gets the funding. Mm -hmm. Becky, you're talking about public access now, like on the Elk Creek there. Mm -hmm. So they can cross private owners land to the fishing or how do they you still have to worry about like you can't trespass or anything like that but where these are located like um if you look the road is right through there they can still get okay. access to it off oh, from the like the bridge well, right on, isn't there then a the permanent easement I think, um for that there is and one somewhere so they can rock either stated the, in that but i do believe reading that and I think for rob said that they got an easement for, for halama yeah yes Right. Along, along the creek bank. Oh, from yeah. the highway. If, from if you, yeah, if they made a little somewhere they got in space in order to make it public access. If you look at the top of the contract, contract, it says um, applicant's ownership and it says easement or lease right on the top of it. So, yeah, there is an easement. Off this driveway or comes off 93, I'm not quite sure yeah. how that. But I know there's a little hayfield strip mm -hmm. before the water. Between 93 and the water. And once this is approved, then I give it to our water management specialist for the DNR to give a final say. And then once they say, yep, go ahead, then I'll turn it into the DNR October 1st. Okay. We have a motion and a sec. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I was just ready to vote. Oh. We have, you were actually using the voting. I've button. already signed it. So. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> I mean, in which case, we we should vote. All in favor of approving this resolution and sending it to county board, say aye. 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 Opposed. It passes. So pass this. Pass it around. Um, let's see what's next. Um, Alpine Mine bond update. Um, yes, Chuck. Um, we are requesting our bond back for reclamation for the Alpine mine. Um, we met all the deadlines and we are going back and forth with the claim company right now. 
um, it is for four hundred and seventy four hundred and seven thousand five hundred dollars and it um, we're also thinking that it's kind of late to do any reclamation this year so we would be doing the reclamation next year it's as my estimation but I'm probably not the right person to ask but the I think it's going to take some time to get this completely processed but it would be more of a question for Corp Council on how long he thinks this will take but we met all our deadlines and we're trying to get the bond back for reclamation keep us informed any questions thank you um, discussion possible action on appointing an interim zoning administrator this is an uh, uh, an issue that that came up um, I think Chris Chris are you here for this why don't you pull up the chair um, uh, in the, the the previous director was the, also the zoning administrator and um, th this is a position that's uh, required for uh, by I think by the state statutes for um, certain official signatures and so forth and we currently as far as I know don't have a zone someone designated as zoning administrator and what Chris is going to tell us is what our job descriptions say right That's okay So there's nowhere in the either job description which says this person is the zoning administrator. Not specific. Okay. Uh, Mike, you want to weigh in on this? Um, yeah. Um, I think you can handle this a couple different ways, and of course we do have the camp compensation study going on, and so that kind of comes into play because sometimes when there is a uh, a change in responsibilities in a position uh, that can impact impact those uh, compensations and we've got that study coming forward uh, in in January well, um, it's, don't we get an initial review? implementation would occur in January okay implementation in January okay go ahead. so one of the things uh, one of the ways to think about this is uh, do we do something that uh, temporary that takes us to that point where we do something permanent um, there's multiple ways to do that it could be the direct you know the um, director could hold that title but I would also I think you know, sometimes you could also have uh, an assistant uh, zoning administrator uh, that's not the worst thing in the world um, I'm certainly comfortable uh, with the uh, zoning and uh, the zoning specialist also being the official zoning administrator I think uh, there is probably benefits to maybe just uh, kind of doing assigning that to uh, the director position and then revisiting that when the compensation study comes out I think you just gave us four options all right <laughs> the recommended option is to to uh, assign that title uh, to the director position uh, and, and revisit that come January okay um, basically to put it back in the director's um, bailiwick I've used that term twice now um, so what's any any idea ideas from the committee um, discussion okay um, Mike have to discuss issues that come about mm. yes yeah we we would to work be working that. very closely together on those things um, that's common um, so we there wouldn't really be we, we'd be working very closely together on that and I don't I don't see an issue in that if, if I mean, I'll try to give a concrete example um, our ordinance makes it possible for the zoning administer, administrator to determine that that's verge help me out with this that that something is out of compliance with our ordinance it doesn't come to the committee the zoning administrator decides that denies it denies a request for instance and then that person has the ability to um, 
appeal to the board uh, board of adjustment. Is that pretty much how it works? Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, if they're depends what they're doing, but if there's a gray area in the ordinance, mm -hmm. the zoning administrator has the ability to say so it's either this way or this way. Right, and and currently there's nobody who can officially do that. So, um, would the committee agree to to um, assign the, those duties of the zoning administrator to the, the current director and, and then to revisit it in January. I'll make that as a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second by, second by Nelson. Well, Wallach and Nelson. Um, Krista, will this, you know, you did point out that uh, added responsibilities often uh, incur uh, added um, compensation. Um, so where, just, where do we stand on that? Sure. So I just went and looked back at the previous job description, and it's from my understanding that the previous director was acting as the zoning administrator. Is that correct? Mm hmm Okay. And we had never taken anything out of that job description to reflect that. So it would be my understanding as of right now that there wouldn't be any additional compensation for Mike to continue doing it. Okay. That's a clarification. Thank you. In which case, uh, without any more, dis if there is no more discussion, Kurt had something. Over, oversee it, I mean, look at it again in January. Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of uh, approving, um, uh, assigning the duties of the zoning administrator to the current director, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> For more work. More work. For more work, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We don't have a badge, I'm sorry. Chris, are you here for anything else? No, that's it. Okay, thank you thank so you. much. Um, surveyor's report and um, pay request, I believe. Do we have something in the, yes. this is it right here. I did see Joe upstairs. If we wanted to summon him down, he would come down. Let's I don't know see. if we need to, oh, but. Do you want to? I can, I can go over this. Right. Um, go ahead. The first section is essentially, you know, verifying all the doing, uh, verifying, do, essentially doing maintenance on survey markers, corner maintenance, and that type of thing. And so this this uh, uh, bill goes starts uh, since uh, essentially since the beginning of the year and goes through July 30th. And so there's the layout for the salaries, mileage, all those things down here, very well put together. Um, this is one of our first bills this our year. Our first bill this year. Um, I believe we have about 20,000 in line uh, uh, budgeted for this, so we're still way under budget. Um, okay, so and, and the request is for $8,851.28. I would entertain a motion to pay motion approved. by Scoyan. Uh, I had a question. Is he done for the year and all, Mike? Do you know? I mean, as far as the maintenance part? Sounds like there could be some more work being done. I just see that he had on there that uh, as of the date we have created 2021 work file. We have nominated, maintained all 35 of the corners that are scheduled for maintenance in 21. So it's like the maintenance department. Yeah, could that, that very well could be the case. Killian uh, will second. Th thank you. I was going to ask for a second. Motion to second to approve the $8,851.28 for the uh, public land survey maintenance projects. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> oh, it does pass, and we have something else to sign. Um, now, cost share payments was, was also in the... Okay in the packet, thank you. Uh, here they are. Um, Becky? Mm -hmm. So we have two on for right now. Um, the first one is done for land and water resource management, and that was on Nick Gamroth's property in the town of Burnside, um, looking to extend $10,217.90. The projects we did over there, it was a waterway, a diversion, a critical area stabilization, and a barnyard runoff, um, and this would all be covered by the land and water grant. Do we want to go to the county cost share right away? Sure. We can do this together. The next one is, <clears throat> excuse me, Neil Shank. That one was a manure storage closure. So the cost for coming out of our county cost share funds is three thousand one hundred and ten dollars and eighty cents, both in town of Burnside projects. Okay. 
Is there a motion to approve the um, the cost share payment request? So by Nelson, second, second by Wallach. All right. I have a question. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So closing the manure storage. Can you explain that to me, please? I mean, oh, and he left. <laughs> just, I just. He could. Oh, okay. Never <coughs> I mind. I wish I could. Sorry. Okay. Never mind. Never <laughs> mind. Is it like? It I assume it was a concrete or earthen one. They just took away, so it can't retain water to contaminate your mosquito habitat or whatever else could go in there. Just got the spray down. in there, or whatever. I just assume they it destroyed yeah, something like that. And so then they would replace it with something else. It'd just be bare ground lawn to mow or whatever. Oh, it would yeah. not be an existing. Yeah, it's possible they're not, they don't need it anymore. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Uh, all right, motion and a second mm -hmm. to approve the cost share requests. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. They Thank are approved. Thank you for uh, did, did teaching we have, me. <laughs> we didn't have anything to sign for that. No, okay. Um, Chuck, we're going to get you to school on time. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Our next regular meeting date is October 6th. Um, same time, same place. Uh, unless there's something else, uh, I. Um, did you go to any FSA information or find out anything from there? I did, and um, we'll, we'll be. Uh, Chuck is checking. We'll be moving really slowly on 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 our discussion. We want we want to talk to more people. Um, it appears that um, the issues that uh, were raised are being raised in other counties as well. And uh, so Chuck's uh, going to be checking with the Wisconsin Land and Water Conservation Association director to see if uh, other counties are experiencing the same kind of um, push and pull that, that we're experiencing at this point. So um, I'll, we'll keep you informed when there's more to let you know. Okay. Um, I, uh, he's going to reach out to some uh, some of the committee members, and, and we're going to get back to. Um, uh, well, I tell you what happened. Uh, we, Beth and I met on Monday. Was it Monday? Yep. With the FSA committee and had had a discussion. Um, the letter that was drafted by Mr. Niemeyer and I uh, was sent to the wrong address. So we were, we were expecting to come in and everyone would just go, go over this and our concerns and interpretation of the statutes and so forth, and they hadn't gotten the letter. So um, that kind of slowed up the conversation. But hopefully they'll get it and we'll, we'll continue to be in conversation. Okay. Kurt. Yeah, I come in the back door. I was over here paying attention to Oh, oh we were talking about the, the meeting at uh, uh, the at. Land and water? No, FSA. Yeah, oh, uh, FSA. Uh, with oh, the FSA. Okay. I know what you're and talking about. That conversation has actually happens. just begun, so we're going to, yeah. there'll be more coming right. later. Is, well, the, we'll, is the goal to get somebody to represent FSA our, on the committee? Our, our position was that we really want okay. somebody back on the committee if, in whatever form that takes, whether it's to have Mike put anything related to FSA on the front of the agenda so they can come and go. Or, um, um, I mean, that's an option. But, but, the, but I think the point we made was, um, as we have new leadership and new staff, and the committee is going to be looking at new directions, um, uh, Chuck obviously has got at least two new ideas that, that we haven't embraced in the past that we're going to be talking about, that, that we think it would be valuable for FSC, for them to have somebody here to know what's going on. So that position is a limited, uh, limited position as far as com committee action. And all right, I'll just, I'll just, okay, I'll lay it out here. Okay. All right. So th it's the interpretation of um, the the director and the, re the our director and the regional director, um, and more specifically the um, FSA USDA office in in Washington that. Uh, the, the statutory requirement is a state requirement. It's not a federal requirement. Therefore, the the the, the agency itself does not is not does not feel it's required to have somebody here. So it's 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 actually getting you know s federal, state, local kind of questions as to how that that works out. And like I say, we're now that we know what their position is more firmly, we're going to continue to explore options. Um, and which is why 
we want the Land and Water Conservation Association director to, to talk to other counties about this. Anyway, so that's, I, I'm sorry, Tony, that's nope. all I can, all, we, 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 it was pleasant. Yes. It was a pleasant conversation. Um, 9.55, this meeting is adjourned. Oops, sure, did you have something? No, okay. Yeah.